All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is part 10, 11, no, 11, I believe, um, of our RPG Dungeon Crawler. So in today's episode, um, as you might be able to tell by the title, um, we are going to be animating our character. And so the first thing we do is add an animated sprite. Um, I'm going to be using this animation guy. Um, so it's in the description below, you can download it. Um, I think I talked about it in one of the previous videos, um, but you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to delete this elf. I'm going to go to the animated site, create an animation for it. <clears throat> and what we're going to have is idle. We're going to have walk. And then I believe, hopefully, since it's a necromancer, yeah, it has like a spawn kind of animation. So we're going to have spawn. All right. Now, in our animated sprite, we are going to not drag it in. We are actually going to have to use a different feature, which is this one. So add frames from a sprite sheet. <clears throat> Go to player, necromancer, control zoom out a little bit. So that way we can see how many sprite frames it has. I believe it's seven vertical. And then horizontal will probably be quite a bit. It'll be... Ooh, I think it's a bit more than that. Okay, 17, I think. That looks about right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, so it has 17 horizontal and 7 vertical. And then we're going to... I'm going to assume the first one is idle. So we're going to add frame. We're going to change this to 15. And then for the animated sprite, we're going to go back to that. So it's playing, and then play spawn. And then, as you can see, the anime, the, the player is very big, so we're going to transform it to 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Zoom in a little bit and take him up. We're going to go a little smaller than that. We're going to do 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Actually, no, we'll do 0 0.25. That is 0 0.25, there we go. Drag it up just slightly. We kind of want him to be floating, right? So that's our goal. Um, and then for our aim, we're going to spawn. I'm going to change that from to the to that little thing. I'm going to lock this in so I don't have to select it every time. And now I'm going to unselect this and then this. And then for the shape, I'm going to drag this in. And I will... I'll make it right here. I'll leave it right there. So that'll be our little area of contact. And then for the hostile detector, Detector, um, let me just double check. I actually forgot what that was for. Do, do, do. Knockback, right, okay. So for the knockback, we'll do, now we'll leave it there as well. Um, and now for our animated sprite, let's finish the rest of this. So for the spawn, the second one is gonna be walk. This one will be spawn, I believe, yeah. So if we select the third line, we can select spawn. That's kind of how we're spawn something. Bam, bam, spawn. Um, we can actually take a look at one of the other ones. Let's do the fourth line, actually. Let's delete this, so let's select it all. Or no, we can't select it. Um, let's delete that, and I'm gonna use the fourth one. You can keep the third one, but I'm gonna keep the, f I'm gonna do this line right here. Yeah, this one. So there. Now it looks like we're spawning something and not blasting something. Um, for walk, we'll add the second one. And then that is it. Um, yeah. All right. Next thing we're going to do um, in our player, we are going to go to, oh, there's no ready function, so we're going to have to make that ready function, um, we're going to get, what we'll do is actually um, animated sprite equals animated sprite. Now we can call this instead of getting node every time. Animated, or let's rename it to player. That makes a bit more sense. Player dot play, um, Idle. Ah, we have to do the on ready. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, 
You can also do get node, but this works as well. OK, so now we're playing the idle whenever we start. Um, and then what else do we want to do? Whenever we walk, we'll go into input. And then if I ever click, um, I think this should actually work. So I'm going to touch this play walk. So we'll do press down. So now when I spawn, yeah, so you can kind of see it's, it's working. It's animated. Um, the player is a little too small, so I'm going to make him a bit bigger. 0 0.35 instead. I think I have to restart the game to test. All right, cool. This is something I want. Um, this is fine. Um, and next thing we'll do is we're going to unlock it, move it up just slightly, and then we're going to add a shadow for him. So to do that, um, I'll add a panel. Going to put it down right there. And then I'm going to zoom in. Um, I'm going to make these invisible for now. And then for theme override, we'll style it. And now for the shade, we want it to be kind of shaded. What we'll do actually is we'll make it black or we'll make it kind of shaded. And then what we can do is go to visibility, self modulate, and then kind of make it slightly invisible. And then we don't want it to be a block because that's a weird shadow. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make it into a square first. Oops. And this is fine. Actually, that's fine for now. And then border width, we'll do, or not border width, sorry. Corner radius, we'll do 5555. Five, five, five. And then let's do 210. Let's see what that looks like. And right, we're going to move that slightly. Let's turn on snip. Ooh, those boxes are really big. OK, um, let's keep it like that. OK, let's play around with this a little bit. Um, for shadow, we can make that a little bigger. We'll do two. And then the color, we'll leave it like that. Whoops. Content margin. Nope, we're not going to mess with that. Not sure what this does. OK, we're going to want that on <laughs> to make it look a bit more like a shadow. Border, we don't want a border. Unless it kind of helps us. Does it? Yeah, not really. That looks horrible. What happens if I do this? Why does it look like that, actually? I'm not sure why it has that thing in the middle. Let's do seven seven for the radius, and then let's just turn the cat the border off again. Okay, I think this is fine for now. Um, it looks kind of like a shadow. Um, what we can do is actually drag this up slightly, drag the panel back down, right there. All right, and we'll leave it like that. So there you go. There's our little shadow. There's our player. So now we have a little shadow under our player. In fact, I might actually move it to the left a bit. OK, there we go. Awesome. Now we have player movement with um, our player moving. Um, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change the direction of our player. So to do that, um, we kind of already did that in our mob. I want you to actually pause the video and try to figure it out if you can. If you can't, that's OK. We'll figure it out together. So we have the direction here. Right? So first, we'll copy this and use the same logic. So in our input, we'll do variable direction, target position, minus position. So what's the target position, though? The target position isn't going to be a target. We're not going towards a specific target. But we are going towards the mouse, right? So what we can do is get global mouse position. And now, 
Ah, we don't need the dot position, that's why. <laughs> All right, minus position. Um, and now what we can do is do, do, do here in, did I ever flip them? I did not. Interesting. Okay. I, I must have actually missed this logic, but I thought I did, but I guess I didn't. So um, let's work through this together. Basically, let's print it out. So print um, direction dot y. So every time I print, oh, we don't want Y, sorry, we want X. Do, do, do. All right, so you might notice every time I click on the right, the number is positive, and if I click on the left, the number is negative. So we're gonna use that to our advantage. And to do that, what we're going to do is, we're going to check which side we're on. So if direction dot X is smaller than zero, what we'll do is we'll play we don't have to play walk. What we'll do is player dot flip h equals true. All right. So that way we flip our player horizontally whenever we go to the other side. So now if I try it, it kind of worked. It flipped on the other side. However, we have to check if it's bigger than zero, right? So else player flip is false. So now whenever I click, It'll flip my player. Awesome. Now we want to make sure that when we're done, we play the idle. And to do that, um, we are going to go into um, right here. Oh, else. Player dot play idle. All right, so now whenever I have my button clicked down, I'm moving, I release, it plays idle. So as you can see, there's a little issue with that. Um, whenever I release up, it makes it false, right? So that's the problem. So we're going to actually remove that again. And then, um, it's bigger than zero. Let's do this. Let's add the else there and see if that works better. Yeah. So this is checking to see if the distance is less is greater than one, meaning we're almost there. So if once we're there, it stops and plays the idle. So now we can kind of move around. And I don't like the side of the player. I'm going to make it a little bigger again. I'll be 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Okay, I think that's a no, let's make it 0 0.5 again. 0 0.5, there we go. Once more. Okay, I like that. That's a good size. Whoops. Now let's take the aim, add that to our staff. Um, I'm going to play the idle. So it's right there. And then for these guys, I'm going to make them visible again. I'm going to make this slightly bigger. So a slightly bigger hitbox. I'm going to go to this guy and same thing. I'm actually going to change this into a circle. And I'm going to make that one right there. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to take this one and make it slightly smaller. All right, let's try that. Let's see if the knockback and everything still works. All right, cool. The knockback still works. All right, awesome. So now we have player animation um, and everything kind of works. So I can move. Um, the only other issue is that spawning doesn't spawn, right? So let's fix one thing. Yeah, let's fix one thing. Um, is action click. I'm trying to see if when I click down. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I'm just thinking of something. Um, yeah. This should work. Whoops. I keep doing that. 
Okay, one more time. Nope, it is not working still. Okay. Um, let's put this in here and then let's update it. Okay, let's stop printing. That's one thing. I swear there's um, event dot pressed is pressed. Is that it? Okay, let's is pressed. I'm basically trying to check. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay, we'll fix it next uh, video. But basically, there is still a bug. So whenever I click and I move, my thing does not flip, right? So I want to be, be able to check for that. Um, when I am still moving, right? Ooh, I know. Okay, so let's do this variable direction. Put that right there. Take that out. And then let's we'll take that out completely. And then what I can do is when I'm getting my target, I'll also get the direction. Okay, this should actually work. Okay, we'll do that as well. Okay, so I'm stupid, it's not working, but that's okay. Um, everything works with our player. Our player is now updated. Um, we now have a necromancer, a real necromancer who spawns monsters. And now I can move around. Um, next video, we'll change up the spawning so that way we can click something and it'll spawn around our player, still randomly, but I want to be able to click something to spawn it and it's not gonna be automatic. So, oh, kind of funny because it'll spawn if I'm here, but not this way. We'll fix that as well. So when I'm going to the left, my player flips, but the spawn aim thing is still not on the right position. So uh, we can actually do that right now. Um, what we'll do is we'll flip this and basically we'll check if get node animated sprite dot flip h equals true we will self dot position equals transform we'll do a position vector nine and then minus twenty six and then else and we'll copy that and then I believe it should just be minus nine, right? Yeah. So now what we can do is we can make this minus. All right, now let's go back. Okay. Awesome. So basically what we've done is we've just changed the position depending on if our player is flipped or not. Uh, we'll flip that back and we'll leave it like that. All right. This was kind of a long video. Um, it was a bit messy, but I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something, learned how to animate our player. Um, we used a bit of different methods to do that um, or different things. Um, we also introduced the flipping of our player. We'll actually also do that for our mobs next time, um, which will be hopefully pretty quick. And yeah, hope you guys like the video, subscribe, hit thumbs up. Um, this series is definitely coming close to an end. Um, I want to start making different videos soon. Um, yeah, but subscribe for more. Uh, I'm going to still keep up uploading channels um, or to this channel. Um, I'm going to try to keep the content coming out really high so that way you guys can learn stuff um, so I can also keep growing. Um, I'm starting to really enjoy making these videos a lot. So, you know, give me a thumbs up if you do like them. I'll see you guys next time.